What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Coffee Pod. My name is Chishi Zed. Drink the coffee, it'll make you feel better. Proof, feminism, lies and ruins women. Sexual liberation. I regret being a 304. No more wasting time, man. Let's get it. I regret being a slave. I'm grateful for the ability to control my reproductive cycle and make my own money. But that freedom has come at a price. The dark side of the sexual revolution is that even though it liberated women, unyoking sex from the consequences has primarily benefited men. Hmm. But if I'm honest with myself, of the dozens of men I've been with, at least the ones I remember. Hold on. Dozens. I'm not going to pause it a bunch of times. I know. I know. Stop it. She should. Got you. Got you. Let's watch. I can only think of a handful I don't regret. The rest I would put in the category of casual, which I would define as sex that is either meaningless or mediocre or both. If I get really honest with myself, I'd say most of these usually drunken encounters left me feeling empty and demoralized and worthless. Mm. I wouldn't have said that at the time, though. At the time, I would have told you I was liberated, even while I tried to drink away the sick feeling of rejection while my most recent hookup didn't call me back. At the time, I would have said one night stands made me feel emboldened. But in reality, I was using sex like a drug, trying unsuccessfully to fill a hole inside me with men. Pun intended. I know regretting most of my sexual encounters is not something a sex positive feminist who used to write a column for Playboy is supposed to admit. Mm. And for years, I didn't. Let me be clear. Being a s and sleeping with a lot of men is not the only behavior I regret. Even more damaging was what I told myself in order to justify the fact that I was disposable to these men. Mercy. I told myself I didn't care. I didn't care when a man ghosted me. Ugh. Uh, I didn't care when he left in the middle of the night or hinted that he wanted me to leave. The walks of shame, the blackouts, the anxiety. The lie I told myself for decades was... I'm not in pain. I'm empowered. I knew it would be hard to read this. <sighs> She's saying this while women on TikTok are saying this. Body count doesn't really matter. Uh, I feel like body count is a social construct and I feel what? like... Body count's a social construct? Yes. It shouldn't have a huge say on what kind of person you are. And I think if you're with someone, it's... It's natural to be curious maybe about how many people they've been with in the past, but if you have a problem with the amount of people they've been with, then I don't know about that. I think that's more problematic. The lie I told myself for decades was, I'm not in pain, I'm empowered. I knew it would be hard to read this. <sighs> I lost my virginity at 17 to my boss at a restaurant where I worked. And a year later... Mm. I experienced my first sexual trauma. I felt damaged and dirty, and I blame myself. Everyone responds differently to these situations. I dealt with the overwhelming shame by becoming hypersexual and promiscuous. The culture was right there to pick me up and dust me off. I doubled down on being a proud slut and internalized the biggest and most damaging lie that loveless sex is empowering. I basked in the girl power glow of that delusion for decades, weaponizing my sexuality while convincing myself I was full of the divine feminine. I was full of shit. I told myself that because I could seduce a man, I was powerful. But as Perry says in her book, women can all too easily fail to recognize that being desired is not the same thing as being held in high esteem. Mm. Deep down inside- Being desired is not the same as being held in high esteem. I believe that's what she said. That's a bar. Let's get back into it. Knew that to be the case. But as a defense mechanism, I created a man eater persona. My mantras were rigid. You can either have a career or a relationship, but you can't have both. Intimacy is creepy. Motherhood and children are a trap. Sex is only about power. Another set of lies built on lies built on trauma. When a man I slept with had the courtesy to reach out, I mistook relief for happiness rewiring my brain to be grateful for the bare minimum. The saddest realization is how low I set the bar. A lifetime of allowing myself to be the other woman, taken for granted or treated like a doormat under the false pretense of being empowered, came to head one night with the arrival of a text message from an on-again, off-again lover. Good night, baby. I love you. 
it said, quickly followed by wrong person. Rock bottom doesn't always look like losing everything or ending up in jail. I wanted to be able to have meaningless sex like a guy, but it didn't work. Mm. Today's youth are fed an even more dangerous lie than the one that was fed about loveless sex. I was told sex doesn't matter. They're being told biology doesn't matter. This is a tragedy. I regret being a slut. I regret it because I regret that those men can say they slept with me. As Gen X women in particular really relate to this, and it's like they're stumbling back from a war being like, go back! <laughs> it was a lie! It's a trap! But who's gonna listen? She's trying to tell the next generation it was a lie, it was a trap. But who's gonna listen? Because right now it looks like nobody's listening, right? You're hearing shit like this. Because most people say, like, don't have sex on the first date, don't have sex on the first date, like, mm -hmm. uh, whatever. Personally, that I, I think that if you go on a first date with a guy or girl, whoever the f you guys are getting along really well, you want to have sex on the first date, do it. In my, at least, experience and in my personal opinion, I think that if a guy, like, if he likes you enough, you having oh. sex with him on the first date is not going to, like, change that. Yeah. Like, I think if a guy's like, I really f vibe with her and then you guys have sex, he's not going to automatically be like, she gave out on the first date. But right. I think some guys definitely do think that well, way. Remember Pieces what of I told shit you, think like that. It just seems like women who have been sold this kind of uh, millennials, too, in particular, the, like, people who grew up with sex in the city and this idea that we can just have sex with men consequence free and that it doesn't somehow damage our soul a lot of women have said that they identify with this the problem with so much of this stuff is that you s keep doing damage to yourself at least i did in in my attempt to keep proving to myself that sex was empowering that i could have sex like a man i kept damaging myself, damaging my spirit and soul in ways that I didn't really fully comprehend at the time. I was too young and I was too high or drunk in many instances. And you can see when I read the piece, it's still painful because I wish I knew better. And I guess part of the reason that I wrote this piece is for my daughter. I want her to know better. And for all the young women out there, you don't have to play that game. If you feel in your heart, like, I don't think I can have sex with someone and not get attached. And I don't know that person. And I feel like it's very intimate. Though, you're right. Those are that. That's true. All right, guys, there you go. As always, let's check out these comments and see what people had to say about this very, very controversial topic. And that's all too common nowadays. But let's see what the people had to say. First comment here reads, sadly, these Netflix shows out now don't help because it's cool. That is true. It's cool to be a 304. And women consume the majority of these like drama field stories. If you're considering a relationship, if you're even um, crazy enough to consider marriage today, then you want to pay attention to everything. You want to pay attention to how a woman thinks, of course, how she sees the world. But not only that, you want to look at the shows she watches, who she perceives as like life role models. If she highly respects modern women who are public figures, who lean towards like the more toxic side, who don't support views like the lady was just sharing in the video we just reacted to, then that's a woman I would not consider for anything serious at all, right? Because the worst thing you get in that situation is you accidentally get the chick pregnant. Now she's recreating who she is and now you have to watch her ruin your child. Next comment here reads, it did not benefit men mostly. What do you guys think? Did it mostly benefit men? And of course, we're talking about women being sexually liberated. Next comment here says the wall defeats them all. That's facts. Now, this turned into a whole thread. A woman responded to that comment and said, this is seriously your response to this video, The Wall. And another guy said, I see you are familiar with The Wall, with the laughing emoji. Uh, it, it, it's really cool to be on another platform when you hear guys use like terminology that like, you know, like The Wall or 304, you're like, ah, my brother. 
Ah, man who drinks coffee. All right, um, next comment here says, didn't women cheer when KS died? Oh, okay, have one. Another comment here reads, it is. What's your problem with his comment? And so this guy's saying, hey, the wall defeats the mall is the conclusion to this video. The woman ended up responding to all these comments and said, the testimony is heartbreaking and has nothing to do with her appearance All the wall. This response is cold hearted and irrelevant. Eh, not really. Because while I still respect the woman for being honest, she probably didn't come to this conclusion while she was still in her prime, while she was still young and attractive. It took her hit in the wall to sit down and look at her life and realize that she's not getting the type of attention that she used to get in her past. And that's why my guy right there was like, the wall defeats them all. Okay, next comment here reads, the worst part is they only realize this too late. Just like I just said. Just like I just said. Another person says, this is something experienced by men too. We're all living with the same struggles. Guilt and regret linger more than anything. Stay strong. No, men do not experience this to the degree that women do because sex affects men and women differently. The male version of this chick is a guy who lives a life of quiet desperation, who do refuses to go out and embraces masculinity, who buys the lies that he's told by society that um, being a strong man is an evil thing, refuses to improve himself, blames everyone else, doesn't take accountability, doesn't challenge himself. Society today would love you to be that type of man, the same that they'll love to create these hyper-masculine women who are out here smashing everything they see, right? Completely flipping the script. Next comment here says, tell it to all the bad bees and women saying they don't need men. He goes on to say, and are free, blah, blah, blah. Next comment reads, powerful. This should be heard louder and clearer. Big difference between being desirable to be used and respected. That is facts. There's, there's nothing men respect more than a chick who can be the biggest three or four in the world because you know she's attractive but then chooses instead to respect herself and i'm not talking about a woman who decides to finally start respecting herself when she hits 35 or 40. it has more value when the chick is young and of course good luck finding that listen guys as always curious to know what you guys think of the content of the topic comment down below your thoughts your opinions i appreciate you all for checking out yet another episode of the coffee pod till next time i'm out peace